Hello, today we're going to be looking at DaVinci Resolve 16, which recently came out of public beta. For those of you who are unfamiliar, DaVinci Resolve 16 can be downloaded for free from blackmagicdesign.com. The free version allows you 4K video editing, some great plugins, and a whole lot more. A recent addition is the new cut page. The cut page has been designed from the ground up for speed. Here you can very quickly assemble your edit and sift through loads of footage. Let's take a look. I've got some footage here. It's a single camera shoot of these guys biking. There are a couple of takes where we can do match action and make it seem like it was a multi-camera shoot. Problem is, I've got over an hour of shoot material for this simple YouTube video edit, and I need to review the clips very quickly. What I could do is drag and drop all of the footage from my bin into the timeline, and I could scrub through a clip. I could add edits and collapse the parts that I don't like. Something like that, add an edit, cut, and then close these gaps. But that's really time consuming uh, in itself to just throw your entire shoot into the timeline. It's a lot of keyboard strokes to cut up those clips and collapse them. Alternatively, I could go through, load each clip into the source monitor, watch it, mark an in and an out point, look at what I think is relevant, and then perform overwrite edits onto the timeline from the source monitor, but that in itself is extremely time consuming and I just really need to quickly review the shoot, grab the footage that I know that I'm gonna keep as I see it. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna jump into the new cut page and the cut page is all about quickly reviewing footage. What I can do is click on this new tool which is called source tape mode. And what source tape mode does is it grabs all of the footage from my bin and strings it along into this preview monitor here. And you can see all these little uh, vertical ticks here and these vertical ticks actually represent different clips from my bin. And as I'm clicking and dragging my mouse, you can see as I'm on different clips, in my bin view, the different source take is being highlighted depending on where my mouse is hovering in the source tape view. So what I can do in uh, source tape mode is very quickly review my footage. I'm just using JKL shortcuts. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, K is stop, L is play, and J is rewind. And that allows me to control play, rewind, and stop all with my right hand on the keyboard, not touching the mouse. It allows me to just kind of go back and forth and find what I'm looking for. I like this clip. I'm going to press I on the keyboard to mark an endpoint. That's where I want that particular shot to begin. And I'm going to stop by hitting K, hit O on the keyboard to mark an out point. And I want just this take here, just this, just this segment, a little bit of lens flare. I want that in the timeline, so I'm gonna hit Shift F12 on my keyboard, which is the Append at End button. So no matter where my, my timeline is, wherever my playhead is, if I wanna add more clips to the timeline that I like, I always wanna tack those at the end of the timeline. So that's why I always use Append at End by default, which is Shift F12. So there we go. I've got that clip. It's the great little lens flare bit exactly what I wanted. Now I want to keep going through my edit. I just go back to source tape mode, loads all the clips from my bin back into the source monitor, and I can keep reviewing footage and go on to the next clip. That one's a false start, so we don't want that. Let's say I got, uh, I'm on the fifth clip now, mark an in point. That looks good. I'm just gonna go right back to where there's the land marked in and in and out, hit shift F12. All right, I've cut a new clip into the timeline. Now I'm still in source tape mode and I can just, I hit L, which is the play button. And by hitting play, I'm still reviewing clips. JKL, which is rewind stop play. And just like that, I'm going through here this footage
marking an in and an out of just the segments that I know that I like, tacking them onto the end of my timeline, and just like that, I've got five edits cut and 17 seconds of footage. This was a single camera shoot and I need to work on continuity, all right? Uh, my cameraman was up at the top of the hill and then the stunt was run again where the cameraman came down to the midway point to meet the bikers. So I've got the yellow clips are biker one, the green clips are biker two. Obviously they're out of sequence and I just need to rejig it. I can click and drag here the second run, drop it over there, and this rebuilt the timeline. It's done what's called an insert edit. It's taken the fourth clip and placed it between the second and third clip and it has rippled everything down to correspond. So I was able to do an insert edit without having to mark any footage, without having to lift any clips, without having to place them into the timeline. It was just a simple mouse operation. I'm not in any special edit mode. I didn't need to be in any special mouse tool. That's just normal behavior for the cut page. We can fake match action here and make it look like we had a multi-camera shoot. Um, what I need to do is reposition my footage here um, so that my outgoing shot, the biker is just taking off. And then my incoming shot, my biker is just taking off. So to enter trim mode, I hover my mouse between the edit points and click. That enters the new visual trimmer. And I can click and drag on either side of the edit here to perform a dynamic trim. So I need to shorten my outgoing shot substantially. So I'm clicking and dragging my mouse and you can see visually I get a little preview window here. So I want to just get him, get his uh, bike just taking off here. And you can see in the timeline here, the timeline is live updating as I'm performing this trim. I've just shaved off 50 frames on my outgoing shot. Now I need to match my incoming shot. Click and drag right there. And that's looking pretty good. You can see a little bit of impact on the uh, rear tire, impact to the rear tire. I hit the slash key, which is also the question mark key. That gives me two seconds of pre-roll and allows me to review the exact trim. Not bad, not bad at all. I think I just want to add a tiny bit more, or maybe cut out a little. Let's try that. One more review. That wasn't bad at all. Let's go to the next edit. Very quickly. Right, to, right before takeoff of our outgoing shot. Slash on the keyboard. Not bad, let's try to add just a teeny bit more, tiny bit more head to our incoming shot. Better. The cut page has been optimized for what's called portable viewing. I'm on a very modest Lenovo gaming laptop. I've currently set my display resolution to 1920 by 1080. I've got a 15 inch screen here, which is actually pretty large for a laptop, but a, a very small screen compared to a desktop. So the cut page has been designed with laptops in mind. I can show and hide any of these tools here so I can hide the media pool. Um, I can't have multiple panels open at a time. I'm limited to one panel in my top left. To change the scale of the program monitor versus the timeline, there's a new resize timeline panel. I can click and drag here. And that just gives me a little bit more screen real estate for my program monitor if I wanna collapse my timeline down a bit. But that's really it. It's a very condensed view um, with just the essential tools being displayed here. There are always two timeline views. There is a frame view on the bottom and there is a entire timeline view on the top. So this timeline, for instance, is 15 seconds long. 
my second timeline shows me what the entire edit looks like. If I dropped into a sequence with a lot more footage, for instance, this version of my edit is two minutes long, my scale is the same. It's always my whole timeline. 